is it possible to mix and do all the system processing in one console for a huge arena show? That's why I had the opportunity to do this past May. I've actually done it several times since this arena show isn't fancy. It's not rock and roll, but it's a graduation ceremony. But it's still an arena, and I need to make sure 19,000 people can hear that one graduate's name called Crystal Clear. So I want to walk you through my console file, the routing, the challenges I had to overcome, my tuning data, everything I had to put together to make sure uh, this was going to go right. My design file, yeah, so you're going to see all of that to come and how I used a budget console to get great results and make it sound great for everyone. If you're into sound system design, or at least you want to get better at it and understand the physics of sound more, I think you'll love my audio math survival spreadsheet. It's available at the link below or at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit. And I've put together 250 rows of calculations here to help you figure out how to make your sound systems sound better. One thing I used on this show in the planning was my ABCD line array planner. It helps to give you a great visual representation of all the display angles in your boxes, how you're making the zones uh, break out, and will help you get results faster when designing a line array. You can also use it to figure out how to align cardioid subs. I also use this with the subs I had on the truck. So anyway, it has a ton of great calculations. You're gonna have to do this math anyway in sound system, sound system design, so why not have it all in one place? All right, so let's jump into the show. Let's get our bearings for the show that will jump through the specific design and tuning and routing challenges they're in. We're going to look at the tuning data that I got in Smart, my console file, and the design file to put all the pieces together. So this is taken from the bowl. Here I'm in, in Bud Walton Arena where the Razorbacks play, Woo Pig. And the house rig are these EA, EAW boxes, and that covers everything in the bowl here. And they also point down a little bit to where the speakers would draw out, but I can use some HF shading on the bottom of those boxes on the house DSP to take care of that. So in addition to tying into that, I had to make sure that the PA I did fly and deploy was responsible for covering the entire floor. So this is where all the graduates are sitting. There was also a wind ensemble playing here, so they were right in my coverage. And then a choir over here, and most of the action was happening on stage from a podium. I was able to turn these back to arrays off so they were not spraying on my stage. They did not sell any seats behind the stage, but we were seating basically 270 degrees around. All right, so my mic positions, which I'll reference later, this is my main array they use for tuning. This is the HTL6A from RCF. I had 12 of them and it was pointed this way. So my mic positions were on axis with the center of its throw right here at the back row chairs in the center of the audience and right here at the front row. To complete the rig, I had some front fills down here. That one was right here on top of my subs that were left and right. I uh, had them uh, in line with the main PAs while I had them there. Some smaller little CP8 front fills there. And I had a flown center fill right here. So let me step through those pictures to give more of a zoomed in application. There's my HDL 6As. It was a single drive line to it, which we'll talk about. So I had no per box shading. It was just like one signal, daisy chain the whole thing, and away we go. This is a single flown K12 for my center fill. Those were the subs on the edges with K12s for my front fills on top of them. This was a inverted gradient stack. Cardioid sub configuration, and now here is it from the side. These were the arrays that we turned off. So they were spraying on the stage, and then the HDL 6A spraying out into my audience. The front fills covering the first two rows, and then these front fills covering these two along with my subs. It's another look at where the front fills were, and this lady right here, sorry about that. This is my view from front of house on the floor. This is the M32 I had. I also had two DL32s. One was over by the band for IO and one was behind the curtain to get all my stage outputs there. There was a patch panel on the arena wall behind me that had an XLR line all the way up to this patch bay up in the booth, which was right here next to the house console. So that was my feed, how I got it to the main house was through that patch panel up here to this desk. And then it broke it out to its own house DSP to the rest of the speakers. And that is the rig. 
All right, so here's the design file. I'm in Ease Focus 3. Didn't have subs in here since I knew I wanted to do or front fills. I was mainly taking care of things with just the mains and that center fill to see how that would interact. So if I turned off, let's see my left in here. Here's the coverage of one side. Those are 100 degree boxes and that's where they went. I have another video that's called why to point some of your line array at the back wall where I talk more about this specific design and we have a little bit of overshoot. So that's over the back row here. I have this receiver six. So that's very common to do to make sure you have the energy here, but that is design. What I want to emphasize before we get into tuning stuff is that you have to get the mechanical deployment right first. So 90% of the heavy lifting is done here. As we can already see, if I turn all the sources back on, I was able to get the vast majority of the audience within a plus or minus 3 dB span without any EQ done at all. So there is no EQ processing in the design file here, right here. Uh, so these are 12 HDL 6As left and right, and that's singer single center flown K12. Let's jump into my M32 file here. So I have the main left, right, bus. I never send that naked anywhere. Right? It always passes through a matrix first or a pair of matrices. So I have that here. There's no EQ on it, no nothing. And that is being sent to each of the six matrices that are built into the M32. This is the same thing as the X32 as well. If I'm sending them to a stereo destination, it's going to be sent at unity because I'll pass left to left and right to right. And if I'm sending it to a mono destination, that is going to be sent at neg six because if it were summed together and they're correlated signals, I don't want it to overload. So they're shaded neg six just to keep consistent gain structure. So that is here and why they're sent to there at that level. So this is my center fill, my front fills, my sub, and then the Bud Walton Arena feed going up. I ended up duplicating the Bud Walton Arena feeds out of two outputs. So it's the same thing twice. So I can have a primary and secondary coming into two channels on that desk. And then the subs were the same matrix, but I was able to send one straight into that top forward facing sub, then one into the bottom facing sub and take that specific feed and apply delay in the polarity inversion to make the inverted gradient stack recipe for that cardioid sub setup. I've got another video on that on the channel the deep, that does a deep dive on that specific rig, so make sure and check that out. So that's how I handled all the routing portion of the DSP, because remember, I don't have an external processor here for everything that's on the ground. It's just the M 32 that is handling all the processing. So I handled levels here by shading the faders here on the matrix outputs. So I left the HDL 6As at Unity. The center fill came down just a hair. Front fills down 6 dB. The sub down a hair. And I left Bud Walton at Unity. And I left that at Unity and then shaded down the input on the input of the desks. So I didn't have to think about, just in case I bumped it accidentally, I just knew I could put it at zero and I would be fine. If I needed to adjust the level of the entire rig, I'm feeding this left, right post fader to all of my zones or my destinations. And so I could bring that down if need be. I would usually just bring down the individual source, but for whatever reason, I need the entire rig down. I could trust if I brought down the left, right fader every destination. So I had four front fills, if you remember. <laughs> so I needed to make sure that every single one of them got the same signal, but all the speakers had pass-throughs. And the same thing with the sub. I sent up those pair of signals to the top and bottom, and then looped through to their cousins on the other side. The left and right got discrete feed and the center. So that's probably the biggest challenge is that my main left-right hangs only got one feed. I did not have any per box. EQ or shading or anything. Granted, those HDL 6As do have a volume knob on the back, but I think gain shading an entire box is the very last tool in my toolbox I will use for various reasons, meaning you lose headroom in the PA if you start shading the entire box. You start to get low mid beam lobing problems if you start to do that. So I usually don't use that anywhere near the top of the list and I didn't feel like I needed to use it. Okay, so let's look at the tuning data. So I'm here in smart, and this is again on axis at the main right PA. So the very front row of those chairs, the center and the back, and this is what I got. And this is where I ended up. So th these are, traces are not normalized. So the green trace is the front row, 
Purple is the very back. And then this orange one was a, about 75% of the way back with the full rig on. So we can see here, this is why you don't like to do <laughs> ground subs right in the center because we get that real huge bump, which isn't surprising here. But I will say all these traces track really close to each other. So if I shift click, I can normalize these traces at 1K and see how they they track together and they did they did a pretty good job. Again, this is just a single feed going to the PA. So the front row as expected has a top and left, but then near the back, it tracked really nicely. All of this is mostly within a plus or minus 3 dB span. So just the deployment of the rig and the mechanical reality did most of it. Here's what I did end up changing the most as far as EQ. This was applied to the entire array. I'll step through that. So when you put those HDL6A boxes all together and they're in that big 12 box array, there's a lot of low buildup. So I used a low shelf down here to bring that out. And then those boxes characteristically have an 88 Hertz buildup. And I brought some of that out and there's a little bit of 328, I guess I brought out there. So a total of three filters. This high min was a low shelf. I uh, had a high pass filter here at 98 Hertz to hand off to the subs because that's where they marry with the QSC KS 118s well. And so that's the EQ I did on the main. So basically just tailoring the low end to follow the target curve that I wanted to use and then nothing up top. So nothing above 1K and that's the response that I got. Here's my center fill. Again, a high pass filter at 98 Hertz. Took out a little bit of mid range gunk and that's that. Front fills, I did even more gunk out of it since we were getting energy from the PA as well as the center fill. High pass filter at 98 hertz to make that behave with a sub and be phase compatible with it. And I took out some of the zippy zippy top end from being really close. And those the front fills in the center were CP8s and those have like a big 16K spike that is just really annoying. <laughs> so I, I wanna bring that out. Subs didn't have any EQ. Well, Walton Arena, I used a high shelf way up at 1K and brought down some of that to tailor its response. Uh, I ended up putting a microphone out there and I can't remember. I don't think I saved it. I apologize, but I, I did capture the response of Bud Walton Arena. I put a mic in the middle of one of its arrays up in the seating in the very center. And I compared that with the level on the floor. And then I level matched them to get that right with the matrices. So that was my Bud Walton Arena fader I would bring up and down and did a little bit of EQ here to get those two traces to overlay from the middle of my audience on the floor to the middle of the audience in the arena. So again, big rig, lots of destinations, lots of places to go. It's still the same methodology. I'm still using level adjustments, the right routing, EQ, delay, and polarity to all manipulate the signals to make a cohesive sound system no matter where I'm at. So again, it would have been nice to have per box shading and or frequency uh, change or processing. It would have been nice to be able to have not have all my front fills tied together in daisy chain. But again, the show must go on and that's what's on the truck and that's how I made it happen. So it's a little bit scary when your tool set gets limited, but you can do it, rely on your fundamentals and make it happen. Make sure to grab my Audio Master Survival spreadsheet. It's at the link below at produced by mkc.com slash audio toolkit. My name is Michael. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time.